Shed Town by Tony Pitts. Sunny morning, summer dawning. Shed Town's foundry fathers, Jimmy and Barry, are starting their day with... Prosciutto con fungi arrabbiata alla Jimmy. Oh, fantastic. Oh. What? Oh, fantastico. Touch of your actual Italiano, that is. Mmm. 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 Mm. Bueno. Mmm. I don't remember your cooking being this good back in Sheffield, Jimmy, lad. I was being here. Shed Town's giving me my mojo back. Mm. Life's too short for beige food. Come. Come. Hi, guys. My article's in the Bay Times. Thought you guys might want to see it. Look, front page, amazeballs. Ah, yeah, let's have a look. Shed in the past, a new start and life's a beach. Bradley Wiggins of a headline. Everyone in the office was well gel. Front page splash, my first story. The editor was like, this is most deaf a front cover. And I was like, OMG, I am going to be a top journo. Hashtag just saying. Hmm. I'm seeing it, Jimmy. Look. Famous at last. Hmm. What does that mean? Well, I'm just not sure we want to be publicising Shed Town, that's all. It's only a local paper, Jimmy. We... Just to let folk know who we are, you know, what we believe in. Hey, nice photo and all, look. Look a bit like Bowie, don't I? Yeah, yeah, a four-eyed Bowie. Only with your face and body and wearing crap clothes with a rubbish haircut without the charisma. Megalol, <laughs> you two are hilarious. Yeah, anyway, well done, love. I'll, uh, I'll stick this up on wall. Not bad, that, is it, Jimmy? You know, front page for the first story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well done. Yeah, no, I mean, like you say, it's local paper. Can't do any harm, can it? Hmm. And along the beach, William Passional, practical architect of Shed Town, has arisen from his bed, a bed he has shared for the first time with a woman, held in his trumps all fingers and thumbs as he makes another brew. Cup of tea, my love. Don't call me my love ever, do you understand? Right, okie dokie. What shall I call you then? Miss Deirdre, no suit. But we're engaged to be married. Oh, <laughs> you haven't utilised the available space in this shed at all, well, Mr. Passional. I'm surprised. Then, not a little disappointed that a self professed pragmatist like yourself has not displayed even a rudimentary understanding of logistics. <laughs> right. Sorry. I'll, uh, I'll display one then. So, I've drawn up a roster of work to be undertaken on these premises that will bring it up to an acceptable standard. You can start on the exterior paintwork. No, cutting corners. Aye, right. Um, I, I just wanted to say how happy you've made me. Coming into my life like this. Um, I thought we might pop round to Father Michael's, you know, get the wedding arrangement sorted. Him? <laughs> Debauch clergy? Low creature. Are you insane? You'll be perfect. As long as we're together. No, je ne regrette rien. No, je ne regrette rien. Got anything planned for today, Barry? No, not really. I'm at a bit of a loss, really, without Carly here. And she's taking Ernie with her, so that's my dog walk gone. Dog walk's not the same without a dog, is it? You know what? I think I'm going to go and sit up on the tops and read my book. It's Pericles of Athens in the Birth of Democracy. Fascinating. Are you up at the Mitchells today? Uh, no, it's Tuesday, isn't it? Eleanor's closed it Tuesday and Wednesdays. No trade. It's not worth her opening. It's a shame. It's a lovely little pub, that. Good beer, good food. Mm, isn't it? Great location. Pubs are disappearing, aren't they? There's some being on left. How serious is it? I mean, there's no chance of it closing down for good, is there? Oh, I hope not, but realistically, it's just not doing the business it needs to. People get all watery-eyed about pubs, don't they? Being at the centre of the community, part of village life. They want to start actually using them. Mm. People always draw man's cultures as they die. They always have done. Morning, Jimmy. Come and look at this. Oh, morning, Colin. Everything all right? Yeah, well, well no, but uh, look, just come and look.
What's going on in there? Open up and have a look. Is it safe? Oh, yeah. It's safe. It smells, but it's safe. Blimey, O'Reilly. Where did this lot come from? That woman I bought Martin off. You know, up in town. Found this lot outside my shed this morning in cages and bags of food. She left a note. Dear Colin, please find enclosed Pete the Porcupine, Freddie and Frieda Frog, Martha the Macaw and Richard the Ferret. Unfortunately, I've had to close my shop. The bottom's fallen out of exotic pets. I found it very upsetting as these animals have been my life. I remember how kind your face was now, Martin, the marmoset, loved you very much. And how loving and gentle you were with him. I've left you all the food for you. Please look after him. You're their only hope. Regards, me. P.S. Pete the Porcupine is very depressed as his wife recently died. And Martha McCall, well, you'll see, but she's a decent bird at bottom. I'm just wondering, would, I, would it be all right with you if I kept him? I mean, it'd be company for me and Martin. I, I'll make sure they were looked after. Yeah, of course it is. It's your shed. Yeah, do what you want, Cole. That's the whole point of us being here. Oh, he does look fed up, doesn't he? Old Pete the Porcupine. Yeah, I know. His spikes are falling out. Quills. I think they're called quills. I wonder what she meant about Martha the Macaw. I mean, seems right enough. Hello, Martha. Hello, then. Can you speak? Specky four eyes. Specky cat. Specky cat. Oh, <laughs> charming. <laughs> and up at the Mitchell Arms, in the back bedroom with the windows open, fragile beauty Eleanor plumps her granddad's pillow and notices his liver-spotted hands and skin so thin it's almost luminous. She smiles softly, timidly, and offers an optimistic eyebrow to his blue, roomy eyes. His pyjamas buttoned up with a poignant self-respect, hung from his cadaverous frame like a shroud. And in his hands, Johnny holds a sepia-tinted memory, a vision of his younger self in a burly frame, and his eyes clear, Piercing sparkle with demented daring do. There you are, Grandad. Shall I take that from you? That's better. I brought you some breakfast. Oh, no, no, thank you, my darling. You must eat. Just try a little toast and jam and some juice. No, really, I. Oh, what day is it, Eleanor? It's Tuesday, Grandad. The pub's closed so you can get me all to yourself. Aren't you lucky? Tuesday? I must be ready. They could come at any minute. Be prepared. No time to rest. 72 Squadron Church Fenton, sir. They froze. The guns froze. It's all right, Grandad. It's all uh, right. Uh, Everything's uh, all right. Just rest. That's it. Oh. Lay back. Everything's OK. Oh. I'm here. Oh, Grandad. And back in the bay, William and Deborah sucked up another pre-nup cup in their soon-to-be-wedded shed. And Deborah said, Mr. Lover, Lover. Mmm. Mr. Lover, Lover. Grr, girl. So I'm going to distribute the wedding invitations, William. A uh, meet and greet. <laughs> A walkabout, if you will. Oh, that smashing. That's a great idea. Uh, leave Barry and Jimmy to me, will you? I think it's best I talk to them. Of course, William. Whatever you say. <laughs> and outside his shed, Colin was dressing his marmoset Martin in a sky blue and gold braid bellboy suit and hoisting him onto his trampette. There you go, big man. Hey, you look bunny in that suit, man. Right, hang on. <laughs> There you go, bit of Led Zepp! Go on, Martin! Bouncy, bouncy! Good day to you! Hold on. Could you? Yeah, I'll turn it off, sorry. Not a problem. I won't detain you and your little friend here. Martin, he's a marmoset. He loves trampolining to Led Zeppelin in his bellboy outfit. Makes him happy. I see. I've just dropped by to introduce myself. Well, I know who you are. I'm Deborah. Deborah Dearden. But you can call me Deb's chutchy face. 
Haven't you got a chuchy face? Yes, yes you have. William Passional and I are to be married tomorrow afternoon and we'd be very pleased and honoured if you would attend. Hang on. And act as William's best man? Now, William tells me you have struggled with mental health problems recently and I'd just like to say that I have no problems with that whatsoever. Here comes the hot stepper, murderer, I'm the lyrical gangster, murderer. It would mean the world to us both if you'd accept. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, I'd be really pleased to. Thanks, thanks very much. Excellent. Right, I'll leave you both to your leads up. Good day to you. Yeah, good day. Right. Come on then, Marty, let's get bouncing. Come. Come! Jimmy, Barry, morning. Come in, William. Wanna brew? Uh, no thanks, just had one. Uh, I needed a chat. Well, sit down then. Oh, yes. No standing on ceremony in here. Oh. Ah, well, it's the ceremony I want to talk to you about. You see, me and Deborah are getting wed. I've made some invitations for the pair of you, if you're gonna come. Well, of course we'll come, won't we, Jim? Listen. We've known each other a long time, haven't we, William? Aye, we have. And in all that time, we've never had a crossword, have we? And we've always been honest with each other, I think. I, I can't just stand by and say nothing. I mean, what are you thinking? You know nothing about this woman, apart from the fact that she spent the last month or so trying to drive us all into the sea. How can you even think about marrying her? She's horrible. Truly horrible. Oh, I see. So I don't deserve a chance to be happy. That's what you're saying, no, is it? No, it isn't. You've both had wives, haven't you? Someone to come home to. Someone to talk to. Someone to share your bed. But they weren't good enough for you, were they? William! Now you've got Carly, you've got Eleanor. I haven't. No, but you're trying, aren't you? I've got nobody, me. Nobody. Ever. I've not even had a bloody girlfriend. All us ended up the same way, with them telling me that they just wanted to be friends, or that they'd found someone else, or just told me to sling me bloody hook. Well, I've had enough of being on my own. I'm sick of the emptiness. I'm sick of being lonely. She might not be perfect. She might not even be nice. But she says she wants to be with me, and I'm going to do it. I'm bloody well going to try. Is that so very wrong? I'll be there, William. I won't, William. I'm sorry. An outside, doubly dippy duo, Dave and Diane, are sticking seaweed and seashells to their seaside shed. A vision on Hockney Render. A salty collage. Now, pass us that one, Dave. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to stick it here, Dave, next to this big white shell. Yeah, that looks nice. Oh, good day to you both. Oh. Pass us another shell, Dave. Oh, look. You've got a nice upon crustacean there. What? Ida de Baltica. What did you call me? This is just one of a number of similar-looking marine crustaceans. I found it here, tangled up amongst a red eptile. Polysophonia linosa, commonly known as egg wreck. Anyway, I've just popped over to say hi. And, as you probably know, William Pashnell and I are to be joined together in holy matrimony tomorrow afternoon, and we'd both really like it if you could come along to our special day. And I would personally be very honoured if you, Diane... With a rebel, yeah, she cried, more, 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 ..would be my chief bridesmaid. Bridesmaid? Oh, oh, at me? Chief bridesmaid? Can't believe it. Bridesmaid? What's the bridesmaid do again? Hang on a minute. Hang on. Me and Diane aren't talking to you. You tried to smash up our sheds. You tried to make us go back to Sheffield. I didn't. You did? I didn't. Silly. She didn't, Dave. Didn't she? Well... She did, yeah. But 
Maybe she didn't mean to. Listen, I'd be happy to be a bridesmaid. And I'm sorry me and Dave didn't like you. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry I called you big nose. And fat ass. And fat ass. Deborah, can I ask you why you've asked me, of all people, to be your bridesmaid? Yes, I have no friends and you're the only woman here. Oh. Oh. Isn't that lovely? Oh. Hey, listen to me, I'm a right soppy cow, aren't I? Oh, right. Thanks for invites. See you tomorrow. Good day. And the day burned on, and the sun reluctantly withdrew, and Shed Town drifted through into a warm, restless night. The highest virtue and endeavour of the mind is to understand the world by intuition. And Jimmy knew. It's not right, Barry. Something's not right. And I don't just mean William marrying her. Something fundamental's not right. And in Collins, far from imaginary menagerie, an inexplicable adrenaline rush pushed. And, as usual, the subject of sleep loomed large in the small hours. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. I can't. I'm insomniac. Go to sleep. I can't. I'm insomniac. Go to sleep. I can't. I'm insomniac. No, you're not going on the trampette, Martin. I've got to get some sleep. I'm best man in the morning. Go to sleep. I can't. I'm insomniac. And on into night's pitch black core. Those who dare to sleep hold back the black with a snore. Shed time. This benign cult bedded down until, in a toss, the giant Jaffa sun impatiently appeared and brought with it a shattering... Jimmy! Oh, Jimmy! Eleanor, hi, hi. Sorry, uh, hi. What's wrong? It's Grandad. He says he's going to die. I've left him alone. Come with me, please. I've been up all that night with him. Oh, God, please. yeah. No, hang on, hang on. I'm, I'm coming. Hold on. Slapped from his slumber, Jimmy and Eleanor walked into a run across the still cool sand and up into Johnny's final hours. Noon now, and down amongst the sheds, passional paced unsteady, but ready to wed. Have you got the ring, William? Of course I've got the bloody ring. It's here in my pocket. Well, you should give it to me. What for? What do you want with it? At best, man, I answer. I have it, then I pass it to you. Then you give it to Deborah. Well, what's the bloody point of that? No, I'll keep hold of it. And you're not bringing your bloody monkey neither. Why? He's looking forward to it. Don't talk, silly. It's a bloody monkey. Here's Father Michael. Now, look. Ah, uh, here he is, so. Here's the fella. William. William. William, are you ready, then? Ready to take the huge step. The leaf. Into matrimony. I am. I. I'm reminded of an old maxim. Marriage is a ceremony in which rings are put on the fingers of a lady and through the nose of the gentleman. <laughs> Not funny. Yep. All ready then, William. Where is she then, the future Nintendo? Hey. Oh, Deborah, I should be back in a bit. Why? Get herself all dolled up, is she? No. She's doing an inventory of the site. What? On a wedding day? Aye. Well, it needed doing, so she's doing it. Hiya! Hey, William! <laughs> wedding music? That's the funeral march, you silly old. Is it? Oh, so. I think that's about right. So are we all gathered? Is Jimmy on his way over? Uh, no, Father. Uh, I don't know where he is. He can please himself. Well, what about Wesley? I'm afraid I was unable to raise him from his slumbers. You think the poor lad is coming down with a summer cold? Yeah, cold beers more like. He's always popped up, isn't he? Where's Deborah? I'm her bridesmaid, me. She's doing an inventory of the site. 
Eh? It's fussing. Fussing and measuring things. Right. I'll go get her, shall I? Into William's creosorted chapel of love they squeeze as Diane retrieves a boiler-suited, caterpillar-booted Deborah, the unblushing bride. Oh, isn't marriage a dialogue, so? A lifelong dialogue between two people as they career through the divine comedy of a life shared. Yeah. Well, my marriage was a monologue, not a dialogue, with a million stage directions and not an interval in sight. Here she is. Oh. Deborah, you look lovely in your overalls. Never mind that, let's crack on on busy. Very well. We're gathered here today in the sight of God. Forget all that rubbish. Just get to the vows, will you? Uh, right, right. Will you, William Geronimo Passionel? Oh. Sorry, William. Will you, William Geronimo Passionel, take Deborah Denise Dearden to your lawfully wedded wife, to have and to hold, to love and to cherish, for better, for worse, for the rest of your life? I will. And will you, Deborah Denise Dearden, take William Geronimo <laughs> Passionel? Sorry. To your lawfully wedded husband, to honour and obey in sickness and in health for the rest of your life. I will. Not you, Diane. Foz, she didn't say out, so I'm bridesmaid, so... Yes, I will. Then I have great pleasure in declaring you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. No, he may not. Right, I've had a good look round, and these are my issues of immediate concern. A, an area of hard standing to be created, and the perimeter of the site, and a recognised entry and exit established. B, the addition of seashells and other marine flora and fauna to be removed from Dave and Diane's shed, which here too forth will be referred to as Shed 3. C, the immediate removal of all animals from the site, followed by a deep clean of Colin's shed, Shed 2. D, the immediate removal of all motor vehicles to include the motorcycle, but only to Shed 4, and the ice cream van usually adjacent to Shed 1. I will be making further amendments in due course. I now request you vacate this shed immediately, as I have further damp works to be carried out, specifically a dry lining and rainproof render. But it's our wedding day, Deborah. Out, sir! Uh, good luck, William. Isn't that lovely? Beautiful. And they shuffled out into a blinding, bleached scorch of a beach. And up in the Mitchell Arms, with hearts open but the curtains drawn, with carefree kids kicking a too light balloon of a ball below, <laughs> a light that burned so bright, now flickered. Would you like a glass of water, Johnny? Water? No. No, no. When I was a child, only nine years old, our school teacher, Miss Speak, brought birds to the school, birds in a cage. They were the most beautiful, the most delicate zebra finches. The colours, so precise a beauty. And she said, we must find someone to care for these birds in the holidays to come into school and feed them and make sure they have clean water. And then she said, Johnny, Johnny, would you take care of them? Oh, I was so excited and proud she'd asked me. She could see how captivated I was. And I did. I came into school every day in the holidays, so hot in the summers, I thought they'd go on forever. And then Mum and Dad said we were going to visit Auntie Alice in Hove, and we went on the train. And on the train, I forgot. I forgot, you see. I forgot the birds. I didn't mean to. I was only a child. <laughs> I, I forgot. And when I went back to school, they were all dead in their cage. 
I, I, I ran out and hid in bushes until it was dark. Everyone looking for me. I didn't mean to... to... <laughs> you were only a boy, John. You were only a boy. Yes. Thank you. Yes. I was only... a boy. <gasps> He's gone, Eleanor. He's gone now. Death in the afternoon. Forgive the forgetting. Spend your life on something to outlast it. Love and live to the point of tears. Accept yourself. And down on the beach, Monkeys bounced, a priest did doughnuts, and men and women still alive stubbornly stuck seashells to sheds and set their faces to achieving unachievable utopia. We could do a little less melancholy, pray for just a little more love. But in these old wooden jackets we sit ourselves in, there's so little in the sky above. Now we're jumping so high Off these crumbling walls We're landing in the sand below And it feels okay When any one of us falls Cause there's no one really here to say no In Shed Town, the narrator is Maxine Peake Jimmy is played by Stephen Mangan And Barry by Tony Pitts Rosina Carbone is Diane And Sean Dooley plays Dave Eleanor is played by Ronnie Ancona and Colin by Johnny Vegas. William is Adrian Manfredi and Deborah, Emma Fryer. Wes is played by Warren Brown and Father Michael by James Quinn. Eleanor Sampson is Nell and Alan Leith plays the part of Johnny. Original music has been composed for the series by Paul Heaton and Johnny Lexus. Shed Town was written and directed by Tony Pitts the producer was Sally Harrison and it's a Woolly Bat production for BBC Radio 4.